يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أحبتي في الله أصيكم نفسي بتقوى الله والإحسان فإن الله مع الذين تقوا والذين هم محسنون My brothers and sisters I start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by sending blessings and salutations upon our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inshallah ta'ala today I wanted to share with you a story that happened during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and some of the wisdoms that are in it and it will revolve around uh, taking a second look at truly what we desire, what our ambitions and our goals are, and are they high enough? Because as Muslims, among the things every single one of us, young or old, should have is very high aspirations, very high ambitions. We want the pleasure of Allah Almighty. We want to get to the highest place in Jannah. We want to be the best we can possibly be. And this is the character of the believer. Now, our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was traveling or he was in the countryside and a Bedouin man, he hosted him. And this was something that was known among the Arabs, especially the Bedouin among them, that they were very hospitable. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was invited into this man's home and he took care of him. He took care of the Prophet. He gave them food, shelter. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to this man, if you ever come to the city, if you ever come to Medina, make sure you come to me. Because part and parcel of our religion is when one does good for you, that you do the same for them. Man ahsana ilaykum Whoever does good for you, then do good in return. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to this man, when you come to Medina, make sure you come and visit me. So, lo and behold, after a while, this Bedouin man comes into the city, and he goes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet then, of course, took care of him, fed him, uh, and was extremely hospitable to him. But then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Tamanna, wish, Salma badalak, ask me anything you want. Ask me anything you want. Now think about this. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Giving you the opportunity to ask anything you want What would you have asked for? This Bedouin man Radiallahu anhu said Uridu naqatun arkubuha I want a camel I can ride And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what else? And he said Wa anzatun halub And a sheep that, or, or a goat that I can milk and the Prophet asked him anything else. And some otherwise mentioned that he asked for kalbun yahrisu ghanami, a, a watchdog that helps me herd my sheep. And the Prophet got upset at him. The Prophet ghadib. And he said, A'ajazd an takuna mithla ajuzati Banu Israel. Could you not even be like the old lady from Banu Israel? Could you not be like the old lady of Banu Israel. Now, who is this old lady from Banu Israel? What you're thinking is what the Sahaba were thinking. And they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell us more about this old lady. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them the story about this old lady from Banu Israel. And this qissa, and this whole hadith is actually in, uh, mentioned in the Sahih of Hibban and Hakim. And it has been authenticated by Dhahabi and Sheikh Albani as well. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when Musa Alayhi Salam decided that he and the children of Banu Israel, the children of Israel, were going to leave Egypt and flee from Fir'aun, that they left at night and they were fleeing Fir'aun and his army. But they kept on getting lost and they couldn't find the tariq. tariq. And this was very peculiar because what would happen is it was as if uh, they used to use the stars as a guide, like Allah mentioned in the Quran, but 
it would become dark and it would, have, it would be full of clouds and they would struggle. And Musa realized that something is going on. This is not normal. They would be able to find their way. So he asks uh, the Ahbar, the knowledgeable men among, or the knowledgeable people among the Ben Israel, do you guys know what's going on? So he makes mushawara with them. He asks them for consultation. What do you guys think? Why are we keep getting lost? And remember, they are actually in an urgent situation. They're trying to flee Fir'aun. And then they say there was a promise that was made to Prophet Yusuf. Now, no, Prophet Yusuf is the ancestor of the Bani Israel. If you know the story of Yusuf, he was the one that came to Egypt, right? As a young boy, he came to Egypt, he grew up there, and then Yaqub and his brothers all, they come to him as well, and then they inhabit. Uh, and that was the beginning of the children of Israel, because Israel, the person Israel, that is Yaqub alayhi salam. Yaqub, the prophet, was also called Israel. So whenever you hear the word Banu Israel, the children of Israel, that just means the children of Yaqub. So they settled in Egypt, and then for generations after, then this is when the Fir'aun came into power and then enslaved these people. So they're not originally from there. So they said, Prophet Yusuf, on his deathbed, he asked us or requested that there will be a day where you will leave Egypt and you will go to the blessed land, Jerusalem and Qudus. And if you do so, make sure you take my body with you. So this was a promise, and they said that generations, we heard of this promise from our ancestors, and we know about this. So then Moses said, well, if that's the case, we need to get Yusuf's body with us to, 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 uh, before we leave. And well, where is he buried? So he said, asking, does anyone know where he's buried? They said, there's one old lady that is left from among those who know where Yusuf is alayhi salam, is buried. So then, Musa goes to this ajuza, this old lady. And this is the old lady Rasulullah was referring to. And he goes to her and he says, tell us where the grave of Yusuf is so that we can take him with us and then find our way and, and, and go. And she says, if I do this, will you give me what I want? And he says, well, what do you want? And she said, I want murafaqatuka fil jannah. I want to be with you in paradise. That's what I want. I want to be with you, O Musa, in paradise. And this was, of course, a very heavy ask. Now compare that with what the Bedouin asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa a camel and a sheep. And this old lady is asking Prophet Musa, I want to be in Jannah, not just in Jannah. I want to be in the highest place in Jannah where the messengers reside. Not just that, I want to be right there next to you. And then Musa says to her, this is not something I can give you. I'll have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa asks Allah, Allah reveals to him that she will get what she wants. Because Allah is al-Ra'uf al-Rahim. So in that exchange, she got herself a spot in the highest place in Jannah. Then... They look and they, she pointed towards a Buhaira, a place where uh, is a small uh, a pond where water collected. And she said, under this is where Yusuf is buried. So they dove and they found uh, Yusuf's body. They took it with him. And as soon as they got Yusuf's body, unchanged, because prophets' bodies do not decompose, like Muhammad sallam, told us, that the, the, the bodies of messengers do not decompose because of their maqam and their sharaf, and the earth does not devour them. So they took his body, and as soon as they had Yusuf's body with them, all of a sudden, it anara lahum al And they could find, and it was as if a light was sh shown for them. And this is how they found their way uh, to, to manage to flee from Fir'aun. And then after that, you all know the story where that the Fir'aun's uh, army actually caught up with them, but then they escaped with the known miracle of the sea splitting. Al-Muhim, the Prophet tells this story of this old lady. He tells it to the Sahab and this Bedouin man. Why? He wanted this Bedouin man to ask more, to aim higher. A messenger of Allah gave you the opportunity to ask something and you're still thinking about camels and goats and worldly stuff. And this is a mentality. It's a mentality that many of us have. 
This is why many of us, if you sometimes our du'as are focused on worldly matters. We, we, we raise our hands whenever you are in trouble. Oh Allah, I am sick, heal me. There's nothing wrong with that. You should raise your hands when you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if your dua is solely focused on worldly matters, or if your focus is only on worldly matters, then you are not in the correct mindset. Our aim should be the hereafter. And not just the hereafter, it should be the highest place in Jannah. And there's a very good example of that with, our, with, the, with a Sahabi whom the Prophet gave an opportunity. And this Sahabi, he would help the Prophet وسلم, carry his wudu for him, run some errands for him. And he was from the Ashab of Sufa, those Sahaba that were actually very poor. So the Prophet one time came to him and said, ask me anything. And this companion, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to think about it. Now think about this. He is very poor. He is homeless. He is not married. He has no job. And Rasulullah said to him, ask me anything you want. And he took a few days to think about what he wanted. And in Musnad Ahmad, this Sahabi himself is narrating the story and he says, I thought about it. And I thought about asking him worldly stuff. I thought about asking him to enrich me. Because he was living a very poor lifestyle. But then he said, I realized that this world is going to end. And that there's nothing better than Jannah. And he literally asked the Prophet this exact same thing that this old lady asked the Prophet. He said, مُرَافَقَتُكَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ And the Prophet ﷺ said, غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ Perhaps something else. Is there anything else? And... Uh, the Prophet, the reason he said this was, Ikhwani Filah, because the Prophet actually wanted to give him wealth. The Prophet wanted to honor him. And, 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 and in fact, perhaps this is a story for another time. This Sahabi, uh, after, so let me finish this first. So the Prophet وسلم, tells him, Is there anything else you want? He said, No, nothing else. I just want to be in Jannah right there with you. And then the Prophet وسلم, said, Okay, but help me with making a lot of sujood. And from this hadith we learn, yes, have high ambitions, but there is work involved. There is work involved. You want to go to that place in Jannah? He said, help me with a lot of sujood. What does that mean? It means pray often, pray a lot. Pray your five daily prayers, pray qiyam, pray the sunnahs. As any opportunity you can pray, that is what will get you there. But this is, of course, a bishara from the Prophet, a glad tiding from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, later on, the Prophet will go and tell him, you should get married. And he will say, Ya Rasulullah, I have nothing to get married with. And the Prophet will keep on telling him, you should get married. And then finally he says, okay, Ya Rasulullah, I will. But then I got nothing. And then the Prophet ends up helping him uh, to get married and to get a home. And this is a story for another time. Um, but the point is, look at these people. Look at this old lady. Look at this companion. They wanted not Jannah. They wanted the highest place in Jannah. If you and I want that, we should be in that mentality. And we should ask Allah to give us Firdaus al-A'la, which is why the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, if you want to ask Allah Jannah, then ask him for al-Firdaus al-A'la. If you're going to ask Allah to go to paradise, to Jannah, then ask him for Firdaus, فَإِنَّهَا أَعْلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَأَوْسَطُ الْجَنَّةِ Because indeed it is the highest place in paradise. It is the middle in paradise. It is where you want to be. Now remember, Jannah has a hundred levels. And the Prophet is telling you to aim for the highest. This is the mentality we should be in. We should be in this mentality even with our worldly affairs. Don't uh, settle for a C, aim for an A star. This is the mentality we need to grow our young children that they can do better, they can aim higher, they can be the best. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was talking about the ibadul rahman those that Allah named the slave of the most servants, of the most merciful, ibadul rahman He mentions their mannerisms and qualities, and finally Allah says, they are those who say, وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama." Oh Allah, make us the leaders of those who have taqwa. Now think about this dua. You would assume someone would say, Oh Allah, make, us, make me among the most, those who have taqwa. Right? Oh Allah, make me among the muttaqin. But they say, Oh Allah, make us the leaders of those who have taqwa. Meaning the best among them. The people that are at the forefront. And this is what we should want. We should want to be the scholars. We should want to be the people that are the most prestigious, the highest. Because that is the character of the believer. So when you want something, ask for the best. 
When you're striving for something, strive for the best. When you're planning for something, plan for the best. This is the mentality we need to have. Especially with your akhirah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله My brothers and sisters the point inshallah تعالى that I wanted to share with you today is that remember to aim as high as you can with your wants, your needs and also strive for them in the correct way. It is not enough just to desire something. Because if one wants to go to Jannah, he has to follow its path. If one wants to gain a good grade, he has to study. This or she has to study. This is just how life works, and the afterlife is no different. But that being said, it always comes, it depends on what you aim for. Isn't it true that the one who wants to pass with a higher grade would, will study harder because he's aiming higher? So it's actually a cause and effect. If you say, I want to be among the prophets in Jannah, you will probably be someone that prays your sunnah. But if you just want to say, you know what, I'm just going to do the bare minimum, then you're not in the correct mindset. Now the bare minimum might get you into Jannah. Like, that, like there is a hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu said, if one prays his five daily prayers, fasts the month of Ramadan, stays away from haram, consumes halal and fears Allah, he will go to Jannah. So the bare minimum might get you to Jannah, but that is not what the believer strives for. You strive to do ihsan. And this is why as Muslims, there are levels. You have Islam, then you have Iman, and then you have ihsan. Islam is the person that submits oh, generally. Iman is when you have actual faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that faith manifests in your actions and ihsan is when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see Allah now how many of us would be sinning if we saw Allah the, the number would be zero so having that level of muraqab and knowing Allah is watching you this elevates your being it elevates your worship it elevates it, it, it keeps you away from sin this is what we should be striving for. And if you feel like you're not there yet, that is the whole concept of increasing your iman. Increasing your iman. And you need to be consciously thinking about, am I increasing my iman? Do I feel closer to Allah today than I did yesterday? And this is how you aim, not just aim high, but strive towards that which is better. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to make us of those that have high aspirations and high ambitions. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that will enter into Jannah, not just Jannah, but for those who are Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Rabbana ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. Rabbana ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. Rabbana la tufarriq jam'ana hadha illa bi dhanbin maqfoor wa sa'yin mashkoor wa amalin mutaqabbalin mabroor. اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة